Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Today we are going to talk general concept of M mode. As we know uh, 2D modality, machine create an image from cross section surface of a structure. In another word, wherever and which plane we put it, the sector of the probe, the machine starts sending sound wave from side of the marker here, as you see, and sends pulse every few microsecond next to each other and sweep all that sector. And each image that create from one line come to the next each other, and finally it create a 2D image with two dimension, vertical and horizontal, and each of them represent distance. In another hand, on M mode, machine create an image from one line every moment. Only in one line every moment. For example, here is an aortic valve, here is on mitral valve and here is on left ventricular. So that line is cursor. The machine, wherever we put the cursor, machine create for us a picture from that line only, but every moment. And you will see such diagram of the M mode, the below the image and here we have two axes, vertical axes represent distance, and that's the reason we can measure it, distance, all thickness, wall, and uh, space, and the horizontal represent time. Maybe this question come up uh, in your mind, if a mode is an image only from one line, so why on diagram we have 2D image? The answer is this. If you look at, uh, I mentioned it, the 2D di uh, the diag diagram of M mode has two axes, vertical distance and the horizontal is time. This time represents every moment represent only one line. In another word, Imagine at the zero, right after zero start M mode, the machine start getting only one line, one line. Few microsecond later, background is, imagine this page is background, few, few micrometer, millimeter move to the left and then the few microsecond next image from the same line come to the next uh, next to the first one and a few microsecond later the background move to the left few micrometer micromillimeter or micron and then the third one third pulse and third image come to the next to the second one and it continue every moment, every few microsecond, and finally they are next to each other, and it show as a 2D. That is the reason you will see like 2D. Why the pattern in each line uh, during the time will change? Because the heart and all those feature and the structure in during time cardiac activity, they move too, so their size, their dimension, and everything will change. So during time, it change, and you will see these changes. Now let's see why the pattern on left ventricular, M mode on left ventricular, on the mitral valve, looks completely different. Let's start with the left ventricular. On left ventricular, of left ventricular, as you see here, we will see this structure. First, here is skin, 
and subcutaneous tissue and here if we have lucky because uh, right ventricular free valve is very thin you will see a little right ventricular in this line we will see IVS here IVS and then posterior uh, wall as you see here this line if you notice they are represent sometime in some view some corda tendini show up so in some cycle you will see corda tendini or papillary muscle show up and the uh, it and this cursor catch them in that moment specific moment because of maybe breathe, patient breathing and tilt a little hard and it come to the view those element otherwise if we change it it can be more obvious or less obvious depending how exactly the line passed through what structure and here is hyper echo line this represent uh, epicardium a little thick but some part of is because of diaphragm so combination of the diaphragm, diaphragm and epicardium give you a hyper echo thick layer here I looked I, I would like to mention something very important clinical point if we have pericardial effusion before the this epicardium we will have fluid here so we will see fluid at the end of the posterior wall here if not you don't see just one tip I want to tell you here later we talk about pericardial effusion and pleural effusion in detail now let's go and mode on the left ventricular and mode on left ventricular uh, on the diastole during diastole left ventricular volume slowly increased and if you notice this represent on the left ventricular area here this is septum is move a little up because expanding the IVS goes toward the septum so it move a little up and posterior wall has sloped down and because during diastolic the size of the left ventricular slowly increased until the point here that is end uh, almost end of the diast not end close to the end of the diastole at correspond right after P wave that atrial contraction and in that atrial contraction five percent something like that uh, depend of the physiology and condition of the patient heart uh, that that time left ventricular a little expand more and you will see some notch here goes up and even left ventricular uh, IVS here become it looks like a little thinner because is that the maximum expansion of the left ventricular and posterior wall too it goes down and so this is spot uh, that we measuring for end diastolic diameter of left ventricular this notch right before starting contraction of the uh, myocardium uh, at the end of the diastole with the starting QRS complex myocardium start to contracting in that contraction contraction on left ventricular wall both of them increasing the uh, thickness in one in one and second this contraction is toward inside not outside that is the reason it bulge it's become thicker and bulging inside toward the left ventricular and posterior wall increasing thickness and bulging up toward the left ventricular in inner side not outer go inner in in and so we will see bulging up that is the reason you will see this path at the end of the, the systole again the left ventricular start relaxation and become smooth and almost uh, stable a little slope up and this cycle repeat in the left when, uh, on mitral valve leaflet if you put it exactly at tip of the mitral valve leaflet we will see some wave shape on the mitral valve M mode let's see what those are on the ostol on this is uh, sorry on the systolic phase because uh, left ventricular pressure goes high if we don't have any valve problem though uh, mitral valve problem those deflate 
uh, come close to each other, contact to each other, and become one line. One line, and, and the cursor if is in the right spot at that point, we will see closing of uh, mitral valve leaflet as a line, a little hyperoco and thicker, a little thick, maybe not. And then at the end of the syst systole, anterior mitral valve leaflet start, mitral valve start opening. In this early phase of the diastole, is very fast, and we call it early diastolic phase or rapid feeling because the majority of the blood flow from the left atrium to the right uh, left ventricular happen at this time. So anterior leaflet in the early diastolic or early rapid, uh, rapid, or rapid feeling, anterior mitral leaflet move over to the septum and in, toward the probe. So we will see anterior mitral valve leaflet goes up close to the septum and posterior valve goes back, even open but open to the back. But since the posterior mitral valve leaflet is small and there is not too much room for opening, so we don't see too much prominent deflection down. A little here as if you notice, we will see here, posterior mitral valve leaflet. When uh, early ra uh, rapid feeling finished, again, uh, both leaflets come close to each other, but doesn't close, still some blood flow goes in. And at the end of the, close to the end of the uh, diastole, correspond with the atrial contraction, we have the last deflection uh, on anterior uh, mitral valve leaflet toward the septum that and posterior a little goes back too and then at the end of the diastole they come close to each other and meet each other and this cycle repeated this those important way we are we have here one is first deflection on the early diastolic is e the end of the e is f then the last deflection positive on the anterior mit mitral valve leaflet, we called it A or correspond to the atrial contraction. The space, uh, the distance from tip of the E to the septum, we called it EPSS, E point septal separation, the amount of this uh, E to the, the distance of E to the septum. In normal people, it shouldn't be more than 0.8 centimeter or 8 millimeter but uh, this is the matter of the uh, how much you are putting the right in the right spot because if you put wrong way you can underestimate this EPSS we are going to talk about that measurement in another lecture under the topic of pitfalls in M mode then now let's go to the, see how it looks like on the aortic valve. Aortic valve a mode. If you notice here, <coughs> here is a uh, aorta, as you see, based on if you correspond with the cursor, you can notice exactly this is my aorta and this is left atrium. Aorta, left atrium, and the top one is RVOT. RVOT and the top is subcutaneous tissue, skin, and a little of the right ventricular free valve. You can see here on the systolic time on the ostic because thin is less than normal people, right ventricular free wall is less than four millimeter thickness. So you don't see too much prominent in M mode, usually on the plaques. Anyway, let's go to the back to the aorta, uh, aortic valve. On aortic valve, on diastole, both uh, cusp here, most right coronary cusp and non coronary cusp, they are contact and close to each other. We will see on the ostol correspond with the ostolic phase T2. If you see the ostolic is end of the T almost to the Q here to here, so we will see cooptation as a one line. Then with systolic start and uh, aortic valve start opening those leaflet open 
and non right coronary cusp go contact with the anterior wall here anterior wall of the aorta this is right coronary cusp opening and posterior uh, non coronary cusp or sometime left coronary cusp depending of your uh, angle the image you got it we talked about this optimizing image and the plaques view in detail anyway this is uh, aortic cusp separation uh, from here to here ACS and here is aortic root exactly right before opening of the aortic cusp here is aortic root right before opening and after end of the systole they uh, they start closing and then they come meet each other at the end of the systole and again this cycle repeat for the next and uh, finished here we have another uh, uh, feature that in uh, a mode of aorta usually we measure it that is left atrium at the end of the systolic so we measure it at exactly largest size this is end of the systolic here closing again line from inner to inner we measure it but one more thing i have to mention here if you notice this cursor passing through that spot of the left atrium and this is not perpendicular to the wall of the atrium because we are measuring minor axis of the left atrium and it should be our cursor when we do M mode we have to do perpendicular to the both wall otherwise is not accurate even in actually when you measure it you will see this is almost equal uh, this dimension but anyway if you want to be perfect uh, a master in the echo is better do an image correct way so in this case just i just measure it aortic separation aortic root not left atrium because of access of the um, uh, cursor the way uh, crossing the left atrium i hope you enjoy and enjoy this uh, lecture and give us a feedback have a wonderful day